Welcome back to Taival Outdoors. My name is Joel and today we are going to do something completely different and that is revisiting my old video, my old adventure from one year ago when I hiked 170 kilometers in six days or so. And during that trip I experienced what was and still is my most, let's say, miserable and, and my worst day of hiking and backpacking in general. And in this video, I did mention that I want to come back to that and talk about what happened and, and so forth, what I felt like in some later time. And that time has come and it's happening now. So a bit of a director's commentary, if you will. But let's start this video. Good morning, folks. As you can probably see and maybe hear, it is still raining a bit. And it did rain. Hopefully I'm not yelling now that I have this on. But just to set the scene, this is now my third day of backpacking. Um, as you can probably tell, it has been raining a lot. It was raining the week before I started this journey and also it has been now raining on and off for the past two days and this morning as well. So third day in a six day backpacking trip, good 20-30 kilometer hiking days. And at this point I was feeling still quite good uh, despite the weather. Uh, it was interesting route, I've never been on that trail, so all was looking well. And also the first place that I visited or that where the trail took me was this uh, nice scenic lookout kind of thing. So this is late fall 2020, looks like cloudy and windy day overall and a bit elevation gain here and that's key then when moving forward. Because as I'm hiking this trail, the first 15 kilometers or so, it's completely wet forest of course, a lot of fallen leaves, on the trail, so very slick, roots, rock, everything, the rocks, uh, everything is uh, completely wet, extremely slippery to walk on, especially with heavy backpack on, and I have one hiking pole. Now, if we would jump to When I sit down at Boiswoya, a lean to shelter, and you can hear it from my mouth what has happened. Oh. oh, that must have been one of the hardest 15 kilometers of my life. Yeah, only 15 kilometers done at this point. This is my lunch break now. Look at my rucksack. After UKK trail, heading away from the shared trails, the other loops, it got really bad, really fast. Yep. And managed to break my only hiking pole. The last five kilometers have been really slow. And I've climbed today Let's say so this is just four, estimated based on the map and contour lines. Four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's the actual altitude that I've done at this point. I've climbed 10 hills all in all in 15 kilometers. So not like big mountains, big fells or anything, but just generally steep, slow hills. And uh, of course, as I said, everything slippery. Climbing those hills was extremely difficult. Let's pause this for a second. So I said there that I slipped and fell. And actually I wasn't climbing upwards, but I was moving, um, how would you say, alongside the slope. So in an angle, tough angle, uh, where I have the hiking pole on my left hand that was then lower than the right side on uh, up the hill. Oh, I hope you can understand what I mean. <laughs> but anyway, alongside the kind of the control line, try to follow it and, and follow the trail. 
there was a lot of fallen trees on top of the trail so I had to jump off the trail and kind of just follow the landscape and I slipped braced myself against the hiking pole but I couldn't regain my balance so uh, the, the, I slipped quite bad and of course heavy backpack this is only day three so the backpack is still weighing quite a bit uh, put my hiking pole down aluminium pole and I could just see like in a slow-mo movie how it started to bend like then snapped and now looking back to that thing it it didn't seem that you know serious at that point I was only bummed that now my hiking pole is snapped in two and I only have one hiking pole so that was a bad thing but looking back I realized that it could have been a lot worse if I would have actually fallen then on top of the uh, like a broken hiking pole and if that would have then um, impacted me and pierced my clothing or, or my skin and so forth that could have been bad you know I'm a big guy with heavy backpack falling completely then on top of a broken metal hiking pole uh, that could have been pretty uh, disastrous in, in many ways and I was in a tough tough place uh, at that point but that's not why this day was particularly bad or at least that's not the full extent of it I need a bit with Leatherman and I think I can get it back in I managed to kind of fix it it's still bent and I'm missing this much and as I'm fairly tall guy this is now way too short there's still at least I think I checked three very big hills bigger than what I've climbed today so three big ones at least still coming so the most challenging part of the day is still coming rocks roots duckboards but this is a lifeline note to self every time bring two poles even if you're just going to use one mm -hmm. I mixed the cheese now with the food. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, so at this point, um, like I said, I was a bit bummed about the um, hiking pole, but my spirits were still in, you know, I was in good mood, hot, hot meal. So most of the time, as soon as the UKK trail took its own turn, absolutely no trail maintenance. Yeah, no trail maintenance at all. So, this is at this point, I don't know that this is going to be kind of a uh, well hard day for me in, in, in many ways, not just um, physically, but perhaps most of all mentally. And let's skip forward a bit to that part. Oh. oh yeah, I almost forgot this happened too. Well, as if this day would not have been already tough enough, I just fell through duck boards. Although my legs look pretty much similar, but it was difficult. Yeah, look at how wet it was. I actually forgot gators at home and I didn't have rain pants either. Oof. And yeah, there's nothing else to do now that pants, socks, and boots I'm not going to soaking wet. That would be completely useless because the boot is now completely wet. Yeah, so I continued walking with wet boots and wet socks at this point. This is probably around 20 kilometers or so in to this day. I have to keep on walking to keep blood pumping to the feet and. Mm -hmm. Make sure that feet don't get too cold. But yeah, the duck boards now on this section have been at times completely invisible. There's so much moss and other plants growing on top of them that you just have to guess where they go. Yeah, the trail wasn't really maintained at, at this section at least. I didn't miss it, just cracked under me. Yeah. All right. And the duckboards were so old that they were completely rotten at points. 
so I step right through one of them. But now, let's see this. From the biggest hill of today, I started climbing it after my feet went through the, or one feet went through the duck boards. And I wanted to talk to you guys a bit. I've hiked now 23.6 kilometers and it's almost five o'clock. Clearly, I underestimated how hard today would be. Mm -hmm. Because yesterday, I think after five, I was already almost at the lean to, and I did 31 kilometers yesterday. For me to now make. Yeah, so just a quick note I had certain pace and at least certain rest stops and, and lunch stops that I wanted to achieve every day uh, in order to make this trip happen in the timeline that I, I had. And that, that is why I'm looking at those kilometers and everything quite closely. And yeah, but that's the, that's the thing. You cannot really compare, you know, those hiking days uh, in terms of the trail and how fast you go uh, to each other because uh, for example, you can see right now, this trail led me to this forest road, and this is of course very fast thing to hike. And But before this, the whole day has been extremely difficult and slow to hike. So it's it's not worth it to compare each day to previous one, but I just did. And like you heard me saying, uh, at this point I had done seven kilometers or so more uh, yesterday at this time uh, than I had at this point during this day. Take it to the lean to shelter. Well, there is still some daylight. I will have to stay on this road and not turn left soon when the trail hits the forest again. And you actually cannot perhaps tell it from this video, but that, at this point, I catch up some of that lost time. I felt like my voice was wavering a bit. About this, call it cheating, call it whatever you want. But, um, yeah, to me it was cheating before because um, I, I I made the decision here not to follow the trail all the way to the lean-to that I was planning to go, but instead just following this forest road to the actual bigger road and then using roads to get closer to the lean-to shelter so I can make it before dark. I, I really need at this point. I do have a tarp with me, but it's it's not the same. It's not worth hitting the trail going in the, into that kind of forest and then when it gets dark set up the tarp and uh, try to spend a nice night there. Mm. So yeah, I guess it's down to my own safety and definitely my own well-being right now. I will put the camera down, make sure that I can get close enough following this road. Now I will bring you back then when I get to the lean to shelter. Well, this morning I did not expect anything like this. That's for sure. Yeah, to summarize, um, hiking has to be really tough. No trail maintenance, slippery trails, a lot of uh, hills to climb, uh, uphills, downhills to go very challenging terrain. Uh, I strip, step through duck boards, boots are soaking wet, socks are soaking wet, pants are soaking wet. Um, I'm losing daylight at that point. Uh, wasn't sure if I'm going to make this shelter or not. And I felt like I really needed the warmth and you know the additional comfort of uh, this type of lean-to and, and having an open fire in, in front of me. At the same time, I know that it was a smart thing to do. It was the right thing to do. Yes, it definitely was the right thing to do. Half past six and I've done 32 kilometers exact. So what was that? Five and a half kilometers by road. And still, I just barely made it. Around seven, it gets already really dark. So no rest for the wicked. I will have to start making a fire now immediately. Yeah, another problem with long days like this um, that even though I made made it to the shelter while there was still some daylight left, there's like no 
then free time to spend at the camp. So uh, I will immediately have to kind of get to work, get, process firewood, get a fire going, uh, start, you know, charging GoPro and other batteries and uh, trying to dry my clothes, eat something. Uh, it's not like spending leisurely time at the shelter or anything. So it's I spent the whole day hiking in wet wet forest. Charging GoPro, <laughs> charging GoPro batteries. Yeah, food is coming up nicely. Bed is there, ready for the so, man. Yeah, it was a really tough day. Huge yeah. underestimation of my. Point. Mostly at this point, I was kind of just disappointed that I couldn't. Because I wanted to experience the trail to its fullest, at least this section that I have select, I had selected, and now it feels like I've done this 170 kilometer trip, but I'm missing a piece from the middle because I decided not to follow the trail and instead make it as fast as I could to the shelter, and that was kind of a, the main thing that really bummed me out that I had to kind of cheat and not do what I was supposed to do and not in the kind of how to say not in kind of a macho man kind of way that I'm supposed to do this thing because it's hard no but I just want to it's kind of for my own sake that I want to say that I've hiked that trail from this place to that other place and now I couldn't do it I under underestimated the trail how difficult it was at least that section um, Looking back, I could have deducted that from the maps. I had paper maps to follow. I could have seen that, okay, there's a lot of uphills and downhills coming today. So maybe shorten the day distance to 20 kilometers or so and not pushing for that 30 kilometers in those conditions. Of course, I couldn't have predicted that my hiking pole snaps into two and now I have a short hiking pole to go. Uh, which, which again made things a lot more difficult and I couldn't have predicted that I will step through a duck board and into a mire and, and completely soak my boots and, and so forth. So there are those things, but it's kind of... Everything else should be ready for. These things alone are not really that big of a deal, but when they compound on just one day and you have to deal with things one after another, after another, after another. That combined then with my own kind of ambitions regarding the trail and regarding the kind of the pace I wanted to make and where I wanted to spend the nights and so forth. So they really started to add up. And although then in the end, physically, uh, this wasn't that super tough day, it took a long time to Made it, made it, make it to the shelter and, and the day was long, but physically, you know, I've done harder things and it was more this kind of a mental thing that, you know, if there's one thing that happens, you can get over it quite easily. But when you're alone, you're, uh, you know, alone in the woods, this was the third day, things start to happen, you don't really get that um, support from your friends or whoever is there with you, because we are social animals after all. and. Hiking alone, this it tends to make us. It, it's we act different, I think. At least that's how I feel that I. What happens to me, and also what I think I've seen happening to others when they film similar type of backpacking videos where they are uh, out there alone for many many days, longer periods than this, and uh, you kind of. Kind of change and start to act differently and maybe perhaps become a bit more um uh, bit more uh, emotional is a wrong word but you get more in tune with your body and with your mind and and um and, and your f how you're feeling uh both like physically and mentally and, and and everything there's a lot of time to think when you are alone in the outdoors just moving along following the trail so maybe that's the thing but, you know, in the end, nothing super bad happened, but it just was just like the amount of things that happened that really got to me, um, perhaps into my head more than anything else. But looking back, 
And as I said there, it was definitely the right thing to do to just skip the trail a bit so I can, I can make, make the shelter. And that is the decision I would still make uh, uh, if I would have to make it again, a uh, similar kind of decision. So, you know, there's no, never put yourself in, in bad positions when you can clearly avoid them. So that would have been additional stupid risk for me to stubbornly stay on the trail and try to make it to that shelter i would have been um, i would have made it to that shelter but perhaps around what 11 o'clock in the evening then what now i have to do the uh, everything that i just mentioned all the things in terms of maintaining uh, doing the maintenance for my gear and myself and got to bed maybe around 1 a.m or something uh, or even later, and then waking up next morning around 7, at the latest. So uh, that's then, the risk then moves towards this day, because now I haven't slept enough and, and really exerted myself too much the day before. So yeah, a lot of things to consider. Uh, my worst day of backpacking or hiking perhaps didn't seem that bad for you, but at the time uh, I felt... Uh, quite down uh, when I when I made it to that shelter but yeah I think I'm supposed to cross that thing but mm. as a final note I just wanted to say that this type of director's commentary video if you're interested to see more please let me know down in the comments or if there's something specific about some video that you want me to comment on uh, definitely wasn't um, my original idea to do this kind of a video. Uh, this was directly copied and inspired by a man named Les Stroud. He's a great outdoors man, a brilliant musician, and most of you know him as the Survivor Man. And he practically invented this outdoor video genre where you film yourself without any camera crew or anything. Uh, doing well in his case kind of uh, surviving or he made a TV show but he did it for he didn't fake it like he invented that that genre and he invented walking in the forest in the woods with camera pointed at your face and and, and the many things that we kind of in this community do was first done by him uh, in many ways and I've been a big fan of Les for over 10 years. He has created now a YouTube channel as well, where he does director's commentary of his old material. And that is extremely interesting, at least for me to watch. There's a lot of knowledge uh, that can be gained from those director commentary videos. So I will leave a link to that playlist down below. And also link to this video in case you are new to the channel and ha haven't seen this, this trip that I took one year ago. It was uh, quite an interesting, interesting journey altogether. All those 170 and something kilometers. But anyway, I guess that is all from this time. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you want to share what is your or what has been your worst day of backpacking or hiking. Um, hopefully, you guys have been free of any injuries or, or you know, some accidents and so forth. But Anyway, let me know down in the comments and I will catch with you guys then there. See you in the next video. Bye. Actually, I just checked the road that I'm hearing is the main road between Puolanka and Turunsalmi and Turun.